right, we are back on the Lightning Step Couch. My name is Benjamin Turner. I am your behavioral health advocate here at Global Exchange 2023. Sitting next to me here is Jeff Evans. He is the Director of Admissions with Crescent Moon Recovery out of Huntington Beach, California. That's Jeff, right. thanks for joining me, man. Excellent. Thank you so absolutely. much, Benjamin. I appreciate you. Yeah, yeah. Tell me a little bit about yourself and what you do. Sure, absolutely. So yeah, once again, my name is Jeff. I'm with Crescent Moon Recovery. Uh, I do admissions and outreach there. Uh, we're an aftercare program. Um, my story over there started first as a client. Um, I, uh, you know, Crescent Moon is a private treatment center. We accept private insurance. Having said that, a guy like me, I never had private insurance. I always had state-run insurance. Um, but finally, it was time for me to sign up for some. I got some, and I, I started making phone calls all over the country, uh, one of them being Crescent Moon Recovery. Now, most of my uh, experience with the admissions at the time were people offering incentives to me, um, book your flight, man, free, free rent, free food, you know, come on <laughs> in, it's, it's on the beach. And yeah. uh, here I am, I'm dying, right? And yeah. I, I've been to state-run facilities, I, I'm literally, you know, sick in my addiction. So I did not care for that. I, I would ask questions like, well, how am I gonna get sober? You know, and, um, and I didn't like the answer. So anyway, I got on the phone with Crescent Moon, who at the time couldn't even bill insurance. There was no incentive. Uh, but they didn't tell me that. Um, so they told me, listen, here's the vision. You're going to be held accountable. Uh, you're going to be working through some of your traumas. You're going to, you know, get active in an outside fellowship. And if you're, you don't fall in line, then uh, we're going to look at other options for you. I said, cool, let's, let's do it. So I was one of their first clients. And that's really what the foundation of our company has been built off of uh, since I've been there, essentially since, you know, the inception. So that's awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. An awesome story. But, so yeah, now, uh, now mainly admissions and outreach there. And um, yeah, ethics at the front of mind. Awesome, man. Yeah, man. So along the lines of admissions, yeah. um, clearly and effectively matching patients to the right treatment right. Uh, can be paramount for the success of the patient. So right. what assessment tools and criteria are most effective for determining that appropriate level? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so generally our phone calls are coming in um, and the way, that it, the way that it really works for us is uh, we're in Orange County. Um, a lot of the folks calling us are from the Orange County area. And, uh, you know, they're generally ready to go. Um, now, that, that really means one of two things. Uh, they're either, you know, continuing to use, which we need to assess that pretty much immediately. Uh, you know, what their drug of choice is. It, let's it, pretend it's alcohol. How many drinks a day? Oh, well, you know, I, I drink a pint in the morning and I start to feel if I go without it for 12 hours, you know, this is when, you know, and, and these things that qualify for detox. Now, sometimes, you know, they've been sober for three, four, five days on their own, or they just discharged. So these are all things that you need to find out within the first few questions after some basic information. Um, but really, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's working truly individualized in a conversation. Instead of going right into these kind of questions that, you know, you sound like a robot that you need for, you know, an insurance, uh, you know, assessment, essentially. Um, but very early on, you need, you need to assess any usage especially immediately uh, at the ready. And a lot of times people don't like to be transparent about that, uh, but that is the most important part because it, you know, God forbid you bring in a client to outpatient like our level and they are drinking, whether they have cravings or symptoms, uh, it's, it's just gonna be really bad for both themselves and for the rest of the community. And it's unfair to the patient. Um, so, so very early on, um, that's, that's assessed. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. What are, what are some of your KPIs or key performance indicators for measuring success of a yeah. patient? Yeah, well, as far as the patient goes, yeah. of course, ready readiness, willingness, but uh, uh, really- On the admission side, yeah. On the admission there, side, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. But uh, as far as that goes, you know, you can look at their treatment history within the last 12 months, um, you know, especially what's different this time, you know? And I hate to say it, but uh, I'm someone who's been to treatment several times. And I pretty much always said, apart from a couple times, you know, that, that man, it's different this time. You know, I, I'm ready, I'm reeling, right? And then lo and behold, I'd go to treatment, maybe I'd leave early, maybe I'd graduate, I'd relapse, and I'm, I'm stuck in this cycle, you know? And, um, and uh, so, but what did I need? What did a lot of the other alcoholics that I work with need is, um, is a level of accountability, right? So mm -hmm. I, try and, I try and press that in that first kind of interaction and just see how they respond. Um, if, if someone's like, okay, you know, I'm willing to, you know, give up some privileges and make some sacrifices and step away from these things that I view as important, and, you know, in order to, uh, to set myself up for success, it's a telltale sign. It's a green flag is yeah. what it is, right? Absolutely. So very early on, you can kind of almost get an idea, right? And, um, 
And it's also something to leverage on where sometimes people come in with that willingness after a week or two, it goes out the window, right? Mm -hmm. And it's something to bring up a talking point. Well, what, you know, what happened? Where do we go off track? Mm -hmm. You know, these are things that you can guide their conversation to identifying, which is important rather than, you know, telling the client yeah. or the patient these things. Absolutely. It's important they come to those conclusions and, and with some help sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. some 46 million Americans are afflicted with addiction of some sort. Right. Um, but only one out of 10 of those actually get treatment. Mm, yeah. So with the addiction treatment gap still so large, right. how can we manage wait lists and admissions volume ethically? Oh yeah, it's a great question. Um, well, ethically, you know, I'll give you an example. We're a facility, we're in Huntington Beach, California. Someone calls us from say, um, Tennessee. The clients in Tennessee, um, you know, they have qualifying insurance. They, they do an assessment with us. Having said that, they're not ready to go to California, right? Well, selfishly, um, in admissions, you know, you could say, you know, unethically, oh, well, they're not, they're not willing to get on a plane to come to us. We're just going to shut it down. No, this is an alcoholic who's, who's ready and willing for treatment today. Um, can't, you know, come to us. That's where, you know, it is our job as a human, as well as admissions, uh, to help that person. Yeah. You know, the, the, here they are asking for help. And just because they don't qualify with me doesn't mean that they don't qualify for treatment. Yeah. Um, so it really is the admissions job to look at those, those resources in their area. Yeah. And that's where it's important where this kind of hybrid admissions outreach where, uh, you know, the admissions guys taking the calls are knowledgeable about resources in those areas. Um, so, so it's, it's guiding them to a solution, whether it's with you or, or with someone else, mm -hmm. it, it matters very little about that. Right. And, and that's really what Crescent Moon's all about is, you know, we're all alcoholics where we start, you know, living like unethically like that, you know, we're, we're going to be drunk. Yep. Right. So we're, we're trying to go to sleep at night, um, you know, and live spiritually during the day and be okay. Yep. You know, so, and, and that, that comes from being a service in, in that matter. Right. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, certainly guiding, guiding, um, you know, any calls to a solution, um, whether it's no insurance, state insurance, private insurance, mental health, whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Have you found any creative solutions that mm -hmm. allow you to serve more people? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, certainly, um, number one, um, let's say we're doing a campaign, uh, you know, in, in Tennessee, for example. Well, we know that we're going to be getting some calls from those areas. So, so beforehand, let's do some legwork and let's learn about some facilities mm -hmm. in that area. Let's get a, some relationships, some contacts where, uh, you know, if folks call us, boom, um, you know, they don't qualify for Crest Moon, they qualify for treatment. Uh, let's send them a referral list, you know, that's already spelt out. Here's, some, you know, names of facilities, their locations, phone numbers, all these things. So we have several lists, you know, both in my email, on my phone, at the ready for uh, state insurance resources, free uh, resources, these types of insurance resources in several different states. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really just doing your homework, some legwork, yeah. right? Um, that that really is just, just goes with it, you yeah. know? Is it my job description to do that? No, but it, it does it help serve more people? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Um, so... Technology and innovation are a major theme here at GXC. Yeah. How is technology helping you as a director of admissions? Ooh, that's a great question. Well, of course, you know, we use technology for absolutely, you know, everything, um, you know, from, of course, the telephone, uh, which we use, you know, call tracking metrics, for example, um, to log all of our calls. We have, you know, a hundred different phone numbers. Um, you know, sure, there's Google campaigns and things like that. But uh, as far as our marketing goes, um, you know, and this is how I explain it to everyone. Um, my, this is not 15, 20 years ago. Uh, yes, the location is important, but your location online is more important, mm -hmm. arguably. Um, my, my girlfriend, for example, she's an optometrist, it, an eye doctor, and she was talking about, explaining to me how important, oh, this, you know, I need to get a good location for my private practice. And I'm, and I told her, listen, if I need to go see an eye doctor, I don't say, oh yeah, there's one right next to the movie theater. No, I go on Google, I, I type in eye doctor near me, I see a high rated one that looks great with a lot of reviews, but it's very user friendly. And that's the person that I'm gonna call. Yep. And, and it's gonna be a friendly person on the phone and they're the ones that are gonna get my business. Um, so it's much more important that way. So digitally, your digital footprint is incredibly important. 
incredibly important and you need to be well trained on the phone to expect that that person found you through your digital footprint right so it's yeah. the the people answering your phones need to be fluent in in that and where they're coming from and what they're seeing um kit let's assume that they might already be on our website when they're doing that call right so so we're using we're using tech for everything yeah. i mean really from yeah. the ground up do yeah. you feel that technology innovators are listening enough mm. to the folks, the clinicians, the directors of admission mm. to better the services that they provide? Yeah, well, it's a great question. Um, yes, now, yes, they are, sure. <laughs> Having said that- There's a no in there somewhere. There, there yeah, is, yeah, yeah. right? Because a lot of these uh, companies that are, did not start in the behavioral health field, right? Or a lot of these marketers are great at marketing a product like Coca-Cola, but they've never worked in treatment, you know, and it just, it's forever changing. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of guys that are very, very knowledgeable that have programs or companies that I'm sure absolutely can help. Um, would I want every tech company in the world to get in this space? I mean, it might be helpful for this space, but it could really hurt too, yeah. right? And so um, so it's a blessing and a burden, but really it's uh, it's getting knowledgeable. And it, and it comes down to the companies that are using them to do their homework as well. Yeah. You know, look at all the options. So um, am I satisfied with it? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's certainly a lot more technology now than there was five years ago. Um, so yeah, I'm happy with the trajectory of it. Could it be better? Of course, yeah. still in its infancy, honestly. It, yeah, that's, that's a... Neat yeah. way to say that, still in its infancy, yeah. you know, but I think there's definite benefits to having a solution or having a technology that comes from the space, that's familiar with the space. Yeah. Uh, and I, I hope more people do that uh, and come from this and, and help provide those services. Right. Um, what, what can we do better? What can technology companies do better? Mm. Well, um, I think that they, I shouldn't say they, I think that when it comes to anything, you can be incredibly, incredibly knowledgeable in every aspect of life, right? But if I don't know about something, I make the mistake oftentimes where I think I do, um, or I can, uh, I can finish people's sentences because I already know the answer, where um, you know, when you come into any new industry like this, where it's, it's vast and there's so many different parts, it's important to kind of remain humble and teachable. Mm -hmm. um, and how do you do that, right? Well, well, of course, my, maybe comes from within, but really, um, I think that the companies need to do their homework really on the people that are running it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, let's say we were to hire a company to benefit our company, our treatment center. Um, we would hope to have a relationship with them where we feel sure, like we know them and who we're getting into in, in business with, but like they really know us and that they're interested in learning how Crescent Moon uniquely, you know, operates um, because Crescent Moon versus another treatment center might be different, right? So, so I think a more unique, individualized experience yeah. is what's incredibly important. Just like in treatment, just like with any company that benefits treatment, there's just no one size fits all. Um, so it's important uh, that that aspect where it's it's unique and tailored um, is incredibly important. But it takes work once again, yeah. you yeah. know. Yeah. What's what's exciting you mm. right now in behavioral health? What Ooh. are you excited about what's going on? Uh, well, me personally, yeah, yeah. me personally, I'm incredibly excited um, in how uh, digital is is certainly what what's taking over. Mm -hmm. um, you know, business development. Uh, it comes down to um, you know knowing the knowing the right people. You know, the hospitals in, in order to generate referrals that are perfect for your center, right? That can really help this person that's a social worker at a hospital, right? But but when it comes down to digital, um, it's incredibly interesting uh, to me. So I'm I'm more fascinated in uh, in the inner workings of that side. As far as the uh, treatment goes, there are so many more modalities that insurance companies are recognizing as uh, therapeutic, mm -hmm. you know, these evidence-based treatments that are incredible. I mean, you know, five years ago, uh, if you told me that, you know, we were gonna be doing ketamine treatment at, at recovery centers, I would have laughed at yeah. you and said, I'm never ever getting into business with you <laughs> yeah. in a million years. Yep. Now we don't do ketamine, yeah. but you know, there, it, you know, evidence, science, so many, yeah. so many yeah. studies come out. And so now I, you know, remaining open-minded to these new modalities, especially if, uh, you know, doctors and insurance companies are starting to recognize them. Yeah. So it's utilizing these different ones. Like we mentioned, you know, it, there's no one size fits all. Um, so it's important uh, that there are all these new ideas that are being studied and implemented. 
uh, because what's perfect for me not, might not be perfect for you. So I think the innovation, yep. the, the trajectory of the, the, you know, creativity of treatment is what's incredibly exciting. Yeah, you absolutely. Know? Yeah. And yeah. Jeff, this has been a great conversation. Uh, is there anything that I've left out? You know, we've had, we've had a great back and forth, but is there yeah. a message you want to pass out there? Or is there anything yeah. that you just want to send out to the guests here For that sure. you find important? Yeah, sure. So, um, absolutely. So, uh, you know, before I am, you know, the admissions guy from Crescent Moon Recovery, you know, I'm a sober alcoholic. Um, I'd like to address this, the sick and suffering alcoholic. Um, you are important uh, and there's help for you, right? I don't care, you know, I care much more about you than every single other guy at this conference right now. Um, if you are struggling right now, I want you to know there, there is help. Mm -hmm. Pick up a phone, whatever, call a treatment center, call your hospital, call, call your, your uncle who's been sober for 10 years, you know, call that person, just reach out. Um, when, we, when we stay alone, and when that, we have that one thing that's suffering inside of us, that stays inside of us, that you don't want to tell a soul, um, you know, you're, you're, you're dying, right? Um, it's important to get honest and, and to bend the knee. Um, so I just want you to know whether it's treatment or an outside fellowship or, or some sort of community or therapy, just, just do it, right? Bite the bullet. And, and what I tell everyone is this, you know, let, let's say there's a six month long treatment center we're not asking you to, to commit to six months, right? And I'm not even saying that you're never gonna drink alcohol again. You know, what I'm saying is just for right now, let's try something else. Just for right now, I'm not, I'm not taking this, your crutch away, just, but just for right now, let, let's see if there's another road that might work better for us and could change our life. So yeah, that's all I got. How do we find Crescent Moon? Crescent Moon, you can find us of course online or at crescentmoonrecovery.com. We're at Crescent Moon Recovery on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, phone number 714-464-8474. Ask for Jeff, and uh, yeah, look forward to speaking with you guys. Awesome. Jeff Evans with Crescent Moon Recovery That's out right. of Huntington Beach, California. Yes. Director of Admissions. What a wonderful conversation. Awesome, Thank you man. so much for sitting down with me. Thank you. We'll see you again soon. Thanks, guys.